So, it's Valentine's Day. I'm in Spain, and this is my date. She's very expensive. She has quite a cute bum, and she's really, really feisty. <laughs> That is just like an absolute rocket ship. Welcome to Autoblogs Translogic and an episode that's taken us all the way from Croatia to Spain in search of this, the Rimac Concept One. This is an electric supercar that was designed and built in Croatia, a country that's not really known for supercars or any cars for that matter. So a few months ago, we were in Zagreb in Croatia, which is the home of Rimac Automobili. And we met with Mate Rimac, but the one thing that we didn't get to do was drive the Concept One. Since then, we've been chasing it all over and we finally found it right here in Spain. And let me tell you, as of right now, I'm so glad we made the trip. <laughs> this is a car that, yes, it's electric, yes, it's forward thinking in design, but they've managed to pack so much technology in this. In fact, more technology than you would find in other cars from much bigger manufacturers. And on these Titan twisties out here, it's taking my breath away. How on earth does someone your age come up with and start something like this? Being in Croatia, I was reading a lot about Nikola Tesla, who was also born here. And I was fascinated by the electric motor. So cars, electronics, Tesla, combining these passions, I was thinking, why is nobody making an electric race car? So I just decided I'd build something myself to prove that electric motors have better performance and that car guys don't have to be afraid of the future because electric cars are going to be actually more fun than combustion powered cars. And yeah, seven years later we are here. Essentially, the Concept One has four electric motors. Each of these motors can be driven independently. We've got torque vectoring on all four wheels, which means you can control the amount of torque that's going to the front left, the front right, to the rear left, to the rear right. You can change distribution of power from being all-wheel drive to being purely front-wheel drive. I don't know why you would ever do that, by the way. Or, alternatively, you can put all the power to the back wheels for a complete rear-wheel drive experience, which in a car that has 1,088 horsepower and 1,600 foot-pounds of torque would be quite the experience. If you look at the architecture of the car, so we have four motors, one for each wheel. Yep. We have a single-speed reduction gearbox in the front, a two-speed double clutch in the rear. So uh, all electric cars have a single-speed gearbox. Uh, this one has a two-speed, so we have low-end acceleration, which is really crazy. Yeah. And then in second gear, we have so much performance, uh, you know, above 100 miles per hour, it's really crazy how much it can accelerate. Basically, the car is uh, all the time driven in second gear, so the front motors and the rear motors in second gear. Right. But if you want the, the full acceleration, so the, the brutal acceleration from zero, you switch it into first gear yep. and start from first gear and uh, around 130 or 140, switch to second gear and just go to... And that's what the paddle shift is for. Yeah. Yes. So, but essentially, for daily driving, you don't need to be... You stay in second the whole time. Yeah. But if we're drag racing, or if you happen to come alongside a Porsche 918 Spider and you want to show him who's boss, you pop it into first, and away you go. I, mean, I think that first gear is for really like a, a tight club of cars. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a certain particular type of driver. Yeah. <laughs> so far, if I could describe to you how the Concept One feels in a word, Height. Clearly, the cockpit is on the smaller side. I'm kind of ducking the whole time that I'm in this cockpit. It's a little tight on my shoulders. For the bigger guys, you're not going to want to be doing a big road trip in this particular car. The handling's tight. It doesn't roll at all. I'm pretty much sitting on the pavement. It's so low to the ground. Now, if we take a look here at the infotainment system, and I go into the settings, 
and I go into my modes, I can customize literally everything I want. So if I'd like a little bit of regen, I just add it and I can raise it to a degree from zero to 100%. If I'd like more power to the front wheels, I just boost that up. If I want more power to the rear wheels, I do the same and I boost that up. I can change the torque vectoring from stable to track to just switching it off altogether. I can change the gearbox, the throttle response. I can have smooth or direct. One other part of this car that I love is the amount of information that you're given at any given time. I can see how much torque is being fed into each individual wheel, and that's positive torque or negative torque. I can see every single battery cell and see if each one is performing correctly. Every single one. Now, you might ask, well, do you really need that? Well, no, you don't really need it. But do you want it? Absolutely. For a car enthusiast that's willing to drop well over a million bucks on something like this, I'm pretty sure he'd appreciate it. Well, what's the price tag to get into such an exclusive car club? You'll have to talk to the sales guys. I'm kind of out of the sales, uh, but I think the current price is 1.2, the starting price for the concept. 1.2 million? Okay. Dollars. 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 So it's US dollars? Yeah, US okay. dollars. The concept S is more expensive. Cool. Oh, what would that go for, approximately? Uh -huh. So that's two of those, right? Yeah, two of so those. You can, okay. And they are pretty much both gone, so it's 1.6 for those. 1.6 for those. Wow. You don't really have a huge presence in the United States right now. Is it hard to get cars into the United States? I know that the rules and regulations are a little bit more strict. Oh yeah, that's a huge challenge. Uh, making cars road legal is a big thing. Uh, so the next cars we are doing is the first global car that we are doing. So just to, like in the US, you have seven serious crash tests. Yep. Like where every time you should basically crash a car and uh, you know throw it away afterwards. Uh, so. Uh, that's difficult for a small company. That's like the holy grail of the small companies to get yeah. US certification. Uh, and, but we are working on that. It really is amazing that a company the size of Remac have managed to design and develop a car as good as this. And I mean that. Don't get me wrong, it's not without its quirks. It still is essentially kind of got that concept feel. I mean, it is called the Concept One. It's just purely the challenge of building a car like this and not sourcing the parts. They've designed and developed all of the parts, not only the parts, but the technology, the battery controllers, the infotainment system and all of the software that runs the car. They've designed and developed it all and put it into this car. And it's technology that you actually, at this point in time, not really going to see anywhere else. And by the way, can I just say, this area of the world is absolutely delightful. With all the discussion of autonomy lately, is this something that Remax looking at? Making sports cars in 2016 is kind of silly. Yeah. I think it's not a viable business model. Of course, people are still going to have their racing horses. Yeah, of course. You know, in the future. But that's not the big change. The big change that's coming is in the way we use mobility. It's, being, it's going to be on demand, and the people being transported are not going to be driving themselves. Yeah. It's going to be self-driving cars, and you're not going to own your car. We are, of course, in the autonomous vehicle game. Uh, we, are, we have many projects already with other manufacturers, but also our new cars are going to have some degree of autonomy with a twist which makes sense for sports cars. I personally think in the next decades, one of the biggest changes for the normal person will be the way that we move. Well, it's been a long time coming, and let me tell you, the Remac Concept One does not disappoint. The guys in Croatia at Remac are just so enthusiastic, so passionate about what they do, and they've brought to market a car that has put so much technology on the table that the other automakers just can't help but sit up and pay attention. For Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.